British backpacker Grace Millane went on a date with an Australian man she matched with on Tinder. Eight days later, she was found strangled, folded into a suitcase, and buried in a shallow grave. Grace matched with Jesse Kempson and after some deliberation, Grace agreed to meet him. Grace texted her family a picture of a large Christmas tree from that location moments before meeting Kempson. Grace would send one more communication that evening to her friend Amina telling her about how well she clicked with Kempson, and that he was an oil company manager. Grace also told Amina they were planning on getting drunk to celebrate her birthday and so they did. They hit three bars in three hours before heading back to Kempson's apartment at the City Life Hotel around 10 p.m. on December 1st Street. Grace had not checked back in with her family on December 1st. Millane's parents became concerned after she did not reply to birthday wishes they sent her on 2 December 2018. Police started investigating after she was reported missing by her parents three days later. The hotel she was staying at reported that she did not go back to her room on the night of her disappearance. Assuming that she might be just staying with friends and ignoring her parents, the investigators turned to social media. There, the police found that on December 1st, someone by the name of Jesse Kempson had left a comment on Grace's Facebook profile pic. The message said, beautiful, very radiant. The police brought Kempson in for questioning on December 5th. In his initial interview, Kempson lies, telling police that he and Grace had a nice date and parted ways around 10 p.m. The police take Kempson at his word and continue their investigation utilizing the large network of high-quality CCTV cameras all over the downtown area. With this security footage, investigators were able to piece together a timeline of Grace's evening. Grace was seen leaving the base backpackers hostel shortly before 6 p.m. She was caught on camera again, taking the picture of the tree, and then meeting Kempson in front of Sky City. Then, Grace and Kempson walk into Andy's Burger Bar for dinner. Ninety minutes later, they walk across the street to a Mexican restaurant. This is about the time that Grace messages Amina about the date. Then, at 9 p.m., they are seen entering another bar called the Bluestone Room. Here, Kempson is caught on camera, rifling through Grace's purse while she uses the restroom. After more drinks, the couple is seen semi-stumbling arm-in-arm towards Kempson's residence. Finally, the last image of Grace alive is captured by the security cameras in the City Life Hotel as she and Kempson exit the elevator on his floor. Obviously, this contradicts the story Jesse Kempson told the police in his initial interview. Kempson was brought in again on December 7 and obviously had enough time to get his story straight. He claimed that Grace's death was accidental and that he panicked. Kempson tells a story about how he and Grace are in his apartment watching TV when she turns off the TV and brings up Fifty Shades of Grey. Then, Grace suggests they have sex. Things start off normal, but eventually, she asks if they could do kinky stuff and specifically if he will choke her while they have sex. In his story, Kempson reluctantly agrees even though this type of violent sex is totally foreign to him. After Kempson finishes, he immediately runs to the shower and passes out with the water on. When Kempson becomes conscious again, he leaves the shower, and apparently stumbles to the bed assuming Grace had left, and passes out again. It's only in the morning that Jesse Kempson notices the deceased young woman on his bedroom floor. He realizes how bad it looks and panics. He stuffs Grace's lifeless body in a suitcase and drives her 30-plus minutes out to Scenic Road in the Waitakere Ranges to hide the evidence. However, this story still differs from the one told by the CCTV footage the police have of Kempson. In it, Kempson is seen leaving the City Life Hotel alone on the morning of December 2. The police then follow his movements via CCTV as he buys a large amount of cleaning supplies, purchases two large suitcases, rents a car and goes on a date. Jesse Kempson met his date at a bar called Revelry around 4 p.m. During the date, Kempson is distracted and through his conversation, casually admits to the crime. If that's not an unintentional admission of guilt, I don't know what is. Finally, at 6.50 a.m. on December 3, a day after he'd killed his date, we see Kempson stop at a hardware store where he buys a shovel on his way to bury Grace. At 9.30 a.m., Kempson is seen arriving back at the hotel without his shoes and then leaving again, this time carrying a garbage bag. Kempson takes the bag to the dry cleaners and then takes the rental car to be washed and detailed before returning it. These massive differences in his story lead to Kempson's arrest. Once Kempson was in custody, 
the police used the data from his cell phone to further discredit his story. Obviously, the location data matched the timeline the police already understood, but it was Kempson's photos and browser history that truly confirmed his guilt. At 1.30 a.m. on December 2, presumably with Grace lying at his feet, Kempson searches phrases like, large bags near me, hottest fire, flesh-eating birds, and finally, the white hackery range. Kempson also manipulated Grace's dead body to take intimate posed photos before watching hardcore pornography. Kempson was formally charged with Grace's murder on December 8. He told the police where Grace was buried and the police immediately sent search teams out to the White Hackery Range and found the suitcase containing her body in a shallow grave, 30 feet from the side of the road. The Millane family was devastated. On December 10, the Prime Minister of New Zealand issued a heartfelt public apology to the Millanes saying, Your daughter should have been safe in here and she wasn't and I'm sorry for that. December 10 was also Jesse Shane Kempson's first day in court during which he was granted name suppression. Name suppression is an order that a person's name be withheld and their likeness be blurred in any and all broadcasts and publications. In New Zealand, it is possible for a victim or defendant in certain cases to request name suppression. In this case, Kempson's lawyers claimed it was to ensure an unbiased jury. This name suppression order stood until December 18, 2022. During that time, however, his name and likeness were posted in sources outside New Zealand and on social media. Had this order not been granted, Kempson's trial probably would not have lasted as long as it did. On January 16, Kempson formally entered a not guilty plea. The trial itself would begin on November 4, 2019 with a jury of seven women and five men. The Millane family was in attendance at the trial as the defense launched into a ridiculous rough kink or Fifty Shades defense as it's been titled. In this type of defense, the victim is blamed and defamed. Grace's family sat through hours of testimony from former lovers about how Grace wanted to be choked, though they did remark about how they used safe words and practiced them safely. It was revealed that Grace was a member of two specific dating apps and that her Whipler profile listed her sub kink interests as giving full control sounds, accessories, restraints, control, and massages. The police had contacted a fellow member of these sites that Grace had chatted with for a length of time. He refused to appear in court but was quoted as saying Grace revealed she'd begun her interest in being a sub through a past boyfriend but he said she was still quite naive. If it weren't for Jesse Kempson's CCTV timeline and the secrets his cell phone held, Jesse Kempson might have gotten off with asking for with the name suppression order which would have concealed his other crimes against women. When the suppression order was finally lifted in 2022, it was revealed that Kempson was guilty of raping another British backpacker eight months prior to Grace's who reported the incident but had been somewhat ignored by Auckland police. Kempson had also raped and brutalized a former partner threatening her life multiple times. These women only came forward after learning his identity through social media. This means that they had there been no name suppression. These women could have come forward and testified establishing a pattern in Kempson's behavior and allowing for a greater penalty or at the very least a quicker trial. For the murder of Grace Emmy Rose Millane, Jesse Kempson was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for 17 years. For the other eight convictions involving the other two women, Kempson received only 11 years to be served concurrently with his life sentence. This means that after taking one life and ruining many others, Jesse Kempson may be eligible for parole as early as 2035. He would be 43 years old and could possibly still make a life for himself. If this occurred in the United States, depending on the state and district, this man would be tried under the three strikes law where he would most likely be refused parole.